Hello guys, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I will be uh, letting you know that how you can jet your bike with altitude or why alti with altitude you have to rejet your carburetor engines so that you can easily reach at desired altitudes. So in order to reach a particular altitude, you have to rejet your carburetor. Uh, in case of fuel injectors, there are uh, specific engine components, uh, specifically engine control units that controls the air to fuel ratio of the engine so that you don't need to think about rejetting and all. But in carburetor engines, uh, rejetting the engine is very much necessary in order to reach that particular altitude. So in uh, this video, we will be looking at some points. So in this, here you can see this is uh, tried and tested by myself. I have reached 5,800 5, meter at minus 5 degree centigrade with my Yamaha SZR in this October in 2019. So this is verified by me and this is not my theory or something. This is from Google and you can verify it from anywhere you want to. So let's, let's first come to the point why we need to jet. So jetting is required for to maintain proper AFR. So what is AFR? It is air to fuel ratio which is 14.7 uh, volume of air to one volume of fuel. So when you are elevating from sea level to the uh, higher altitude, you are basically getting thinner air volume. So their oxygen density becomes less. Now when oxygen density less, but you are giving the engine same amount of fuel, so the engine cannot burn the fuel properly. So we need to uh, maintain the proper air to fuel ratio in order to get best performance and uh, the second point is to stop choking so whenever you are uh, delivering more and more fuel to the engine the engine will become choked and the spark plug tip will become sooty black and after some time it will not spark well so it will uh, throw some black smoke from the exhaust and will not perform good and you may not be able to reach the desired altitude and the third point is to compensate with air volume that I mentioned before that whenever you are elevating from sea level, you get lesser volume of oxygen and hence you have to rejet your carburetor. So when we require jetting, the second point comes in our mind that when we require jetting, so re, uh, jetting is required at each 1500 meter of elevation. So each 1500 meter elevation you need to check uh, this graph and I will be coming a little bit later on this graph. So each 1500 meter we have to take temperature into consideration and then we need to think about if we need jet, if we need to jet the carburetor, reject the carburetor or not. Now you are thinking that uh, if I jet will I maintain the same power that I get in the sea level. No, absolutely not. Even with jetting, engine power will lose and with every 1000 meter, the power will drop to about 96.5%. That is, you will be losing 3.5% of power in every 1000 meter of elevation. Now, but it will have enough power to reach where you want to reach. That means if you calculate the required jetting from this graph, you will be able to reach the altitude where you are trying to reach. So next point coming to which jet I need to tune and to maintain AFR. There are many circuits are interconnected each other in carburetors. So there is pilot circuit, there is needle circuit, there is main jet circuit. Now in if you don't have all these uh, parts then you can readily go and change main jet that will help you out in these scenarios most of the time that will not be the best option but that is more than sufficient to reach you your desired altitude now so this is uh, it the preferably the main jet you should change 
and the slider pin can also be adjusted so in some carburetor the slider pin there is a pin coming from the diaphragm that is called a slider pin that is uh, adjustable uh, there are some points in the pin in the head of the pin and that can be set uh, high or low so according to that you can set the pin height but that is also not available in all the carburetors so you can skip this step and also you are thinking there is a pilot screw we know that pilot screw right uh, we need to adjust that in order to uh, have a good idle mixture and idle rpm so in these scenarios the idle screw or the pilot screw does not play any significant role so uh, having adjusted the pilot screw you may not help the scenarios now come to the next point what can we do with the air filter so this has a lot to do with this scenarios now when you are unable to when your bike unable to breathe properly it will not deliver power properly so you have uh, you can do many things like uh, in my case i removed the stock air filter and replaced it with a pod filter so it uh, helped me a lot and it is always handy to carry a uni filter with you uh, and uh, you can always check it and replace the stock paper filter which is very much restricted one to a more breathable one like a k and n or uni or moxie anything like that if you are not uh, very comfortable in rejetting or changing main jet on the go then you can anyways change the air filter and give it a try and sometimes it works very well and you may not need to reject and all, uh, only changing the filter you will be fine to go so you can always carry a pod filter with you here is the graph you can see i have plotted temperature with cor uh, correction factor so we are considering the temperature and then we will consider the elevation here you can see a different elevation levels i have plotted with these lines it is indicating the different uh, height of elevation levels so now we will be considering the sea level. So this line you can see here is the sea level line and it is calibrated between 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. So here it intersects at this point and this is number 1. So one correction factor means it is the stock settings of our bike. So if you have say 100 main jet, so multiply it with correction factor and you will get the desired main jet number you have to opt for. So in, in 25 degree centigrade you can see at sea level you have correction factor 1 that is you are on the stock main jet. Now uh, consider 1500 meter line. So this blue line sky blue line you can see. For example I have taken this to be Gangtok. So Gangtok is at 1600 meter. Now you can see uh, in Gangtok the temperature is around 10 to 20 degree centigrade. So let's take the average, so 15 degree and it's intersect at this point. So this point refers to 0.97 correction factor. So I have taken this correction factor. Now you get the point, right? How you can take the correction factor? You have to take a power line from here and then you have to consider a temperature and then the intersecting point is your correction factor. So in Gangtok the correction factor is 0.97. So multiply this with stock jet in SZR. I have considered here two bikes, SZR and FZ. So in stock jet, I have 120. So I need to change it to 116 in order to maintain proper air to fuel ratio. Now in FZ, stock uh, jet is now in FZ in stock jet is 112. So I need to change it to 108. Now let's move on to the next. Uh, line. So here 3500 meter the green line. Now I have considered it to be Lachen. So Lachen is at 2700 meter but I have considered this line uh, it will not change uh, a lot. So let's consider this green line and in Lachen the temperature is around 0 to 10 degree centigrade. So between 0 to 10 degree centigrade you can see the intersecting point is indicating the correction factor 0.93. So multiplying with 0.93 you can get the respective jetting numbers. In 6000 meter 
that is Gudong Mar or zero point. There are nearly about 5,500 to 6,000 meters, and the temperature is around minus zero to minus 10 degrees centigrade. So we are considering this region. So in this region, you are getting 0.9 as a correction factor. So multiplying with 0.9 as a correction factor. You can get the stock major and the required major 108 for SZR and 100 for FZ. So we have done with the theory part. Now it's time to share my personal experience because you know the theory does not always tally with the practical part. So in my case, it was the same. So I went to Gangtok at 1600 meter with the stock bike. In Gangtok, I replace the stock airbox with a pod filter. So I always suggest you to carry a pod filter with you and it becomes very handy. So after removing the stock airbox and replaced, with, replaced it with the pod filter, I was able to reach up to Lachen and up, up to Thangu, I would say, up to 4000 meter without any problem. The, yes, there was a uh, loss of power in bike but I managed to reach Thangu with a pillion and with the loaded bike with all the uh, luggage and stuff you know so after Thangu it was really a problem with the bike so the bike was losing so much power and it was behaving like uh, it cannot go any further in Thangu I changed it to 112 manjit I got it from Yamaha FZ had 112 manjit but I need to change it to 107 but I could not find any manjit of that required number so I decided to stick with FZ manjit and that's the reason I couldn't reach Gurudangma lake uh, before 100 meter I stopped many bikers stopped there uh, approximately 70% of bike can't reach Gurudangma lake and they have to push the bike the last 100 meter because there the slope becomes very high and the oxygen density becomes very very less so without jetting and also without proper jetting I would say it is a mac in maximum case it is nearly impossible only AFI bikes could reach but there was a misconception that carburetor bike cannot reach Gurdangmar with a pillion it is impossible but I have done it with a pillion, so trust me, it is doable, it is possible to make Gurudangmar and it's one of the highest lake in the world. So if you can reach Gurudangmar Cholamu at 18,000 feet, then, then you can reach anywhere with the carburetor bike. So yeah, that was it for the video. I hope you liked the video, so give it a, a thumbs up and if you have learned something, and you want to learn more about uh, all this stuff so do subscribe to my channel and i will see you in the next one take care goodbye